Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and doing a tutorial with two of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palettes. I have two of the three. I will explain all that good stuff in a moment, but if you want to see my thoughts and all that, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys, particularly Charlotte Tilbury. Definitely my favorite brand of 2020, so I had to pick up her new quads because I really fell in love with Charlotte Tilbury quads this year, so I had to get on these new releases. I thought that they were stunning. Now, a little bit of a weird launch because one palette dropped at a time on different days from different retailers. I got one from Selfridges. I got one from Charlotte Tilbury. One's coming from Sephora. Yeah, so three palettes launched. I only have two. The third one is currently on its way to me, but again, um, it's just too weird. I just thought I would do these two, and then I'll do the third one on a separate video, so just keep your eyes out for that. So the quads that I'm reviewing today for you are Diva Lights and Star Aura. So let's get into the details of these guys. They are going to be $53 each. You can pick them up from Sephora, Charlotte Tilbury's website, and Selfridges. I will link all of those down below for you guys if you are interested in purchasing them. Also in the collection, she came out with a eyeliner, but I think that's been in the line for a while, but she also came out with new colors of the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which is one of my favorite liquid highlighting products. It's probably the only one that I actually enjoy. So she has new colors now. She also sells them in minis. So definitely get on that if you haven't tried that product yet. Highly recommend it. But today we're focusing on the quads. These are $53 each on the website. It says that they are limited edition and there are three, but we are talking about two. I've already said that though. So both of these are made in Italy and they have a suggested shelf life of 18 months. Now, I did not find this information out. My friend Tara Lynn here on YouTube, she looked into the grams. She always does gram comparisons and these palettes are almost half the amount of product as her regular quads. Again, I'm getting this from Tara. Make sure you go check her video out. The price per gram on this palette is $18.93. The price per gram in her traditional quads are $10.19, almost twice the price. This guy has 2.8 grams altogether. The traditional quads have 5.2 grams, almost half the amount of product still the same price. I don't know if it's because it's a different formula or Charlotte Tilbury is just trying to steal our money, but not a good sign. I don't like that. I don't feel good about that. I will say the formula on this feels more lightweight. It's more almost like a gelée type feeling. Not quite fully gelée, but a little bit as opposed to the creamier, thicker, heavier formula that you will find in the traditional Charlotte Tilbury quads. I don't know if that has anything to do with that, but regardless, you're getting a lot less product and I hope this isn't a trend. I hope we go back to those traditional quads and that value because I've always said this before, her price per gram in general in those original quads is really high compared to the regular market. Like already I always said it was a bit of a ripoff because the value was just not there. It was always really really high price per gram and this $18 is ridiculous if you compare that to other brands. So that aside, I did want to bring that to your attention. That might be enough for you not to purchase because $53 for a quad is ridiculous to begin with, let alone if you're paying $18 per gram. That aside, I'm still going to review the product from a neutral stance. So I just wanted to let y'all know that though. Let's get into the quads now. So we'll start off with the packaging. We do have a really cute design. I do like that she sticks with the pretty traditional packaging in all of her quads because it, they just fit so well on a shelf together. They store very easily and the designs are really cute. So this one has a new design right here. Really pretty. I like it. Simple, classic, all of that good stuff. Now when you open Open it up, what makes these special, and it's hard to see because I wiped them down, but all of these have the Hollywood embossment in them, and I thought it was so pretty. It hurt me to run my fingers over it because it does go away pretty quickly after one use. It's a gorgeous experience when you first open it. So the first one that we are going to talk about is Star Aura. So you can see this is a very nude quad. So this is described as a social media filter inspired eyeshadow palette with shades 
of blush pink and metallic brown for wider, brighter looking eyes. So this is supposed to create a brighter, bigger, more awake eye. Definitely a very Charlotte Tilbury technique. So here it is, a swatch. I really enjoy these colors, but you are not getting any type of depth with this palette. If you want some depth with this look, you are most definitely going to have to go into a different palette. Now, both of these palettes, there are zero mattes. The mattish kind of shades are more so of a satin, but every shadow here has a sheen if you're not a fan of that. I will say, give it a try if you're a little bit scared of non-matte looks, because I find the Charlotte Tilbury formula to be beautiful on mature eyelids, and it's not something that you should shy away from. And just beautiful overall, I think that is partially what makes the Charlotte Tilbury brand so unique is that she's not afraid to not throw in mattes. You can get a pretty look without mattes. So looking into Star Aura here, I would say all four of the shades pretty much have kind of the same finish. This shade right here has a little bit more glimmer in it. Now, one thing I did want to mention before I get into the tutorial is it reminded me a lot of the brand new Tom Ford First Frost palette. I'm gonna show you the swatch comparisons now. They are very, very close. The top corner in the Tom Ford is a little bit more white and the formulation in the Tom Ford has a little bit more pop, a little bit more of a elegant shimmer to it as well. Both are pretty, both are very similar. Similar, but if you have the Tom Ford First Frost, you don't need the Charlotte Tilbury. And I will say, I don't want to give away my thoughts on this quad too early, but if you are contemplating between the Star Aura from Charlotte Tilbury and the Tom Ford, go for the Tom Ford. It's a better value, and honestly, I prefer the formulation of the Tom Ford. Anyways, let's just get into the tutorial so you can see the look that I created. For this tutorial, we are using Star Aura. I'm going to start off with the Tom Ford 11 brush in the pinkier shade. I'm just going to to wash this all over the lid to give kind of a pinky glow. BK Beauty 202, we're taking the second to deepest shade. Now the two bottom shades, I will say they pull deeper than you would expect. Like that shade looked really light and you can see it really is actually adding depth to my eye. Refer at number 12 brush and we are taking the deepest shade now and I am going to just apply this right into the crease and then all along my lower lash line. Again, it pulls deeper than you would expect, but this is an all shimmer palette and the shades are still pretty light. Refer number three and we're taking the lightest shade. I'm going to use this as my inner corner color and underneath the brow bone. Okay, so here is the final shadow look. I'm going to do liner and lashes and I'll show you the final look. You can see it's really a truly nude palette for my skin tone. It's really, really pretty. I don't think it's a color story for everybody, but I will get into that in my final roundup. Here's the final look. So I will say I really enjoyed the look and I do see this as a quad that I will personally reach for. I can't recommend it because these are definitely colors that I already have in my collection. It's not a unique palette at all. And I do mostly like a little bit more depth on most occasions. So for me, it's kind of an incomplete palette. Again, it does brighten up my eyes. It does do all of that. And it is a pretty palette. The quality worked really well. It wore decently. It did fade at the end of the day, but I wore it for many, many hours. But it's not worth the money. Between the grams and just what you can get, I would highly encourage you to get the Tom Ford First Frost instead. Okay, so let's move into the second palette here. This is the one that I'm currently wearing today. This is the Diva Light quad. So this one has a little bit more variation as far as the formulations you're getting. I would say you're getting two shimmers. You're getting one shimmer that has a little bit of extra pop and flex in it. It has just a touch more shimmers. And then you have a satin black. It's not a flat, flat matte. It does have a bit of a satin, but for the most part, you can't really tell. It does work pretty flawlessly together with these formulas. I was really excited about this one because I felt like it had more variation in the colors. So this one had shades of champagne, rose, taupe, and black for whiter, brighter eyes. This isn't an original color story as well. I didn't pinpoint a palette that was exactly the same as this. 
this, but a copper, a brown, a shimmery champagne, and a black. There's a lot of quads. There's a lot of other palettes that have these colors, so this is by no means a unique color story, but I love the Charlotte Tilbury formula, so I was excited for this one. I'm gonna take you into the tutorial of this, and then I'll come back with my final thoughts. So let's get into Diva Light. That's what this is looking like, swatch-wise. Isom V34, and we're going in with this shade. I am just going to apply this color in my crease, and I've got to admit, this is not my favorite color to wear in the crease. Like, I normally like browns, but I feel like this one might be a little bit too shimmery. I don't know. I don't really like it. It looks a little dirty and unblended to me. I don't know. I think it's a bit much to put straight into the crease, but it works. Going to run that along the lower lash line. So do you see how that shade looks a little bit patchy? I just don't like it as a crease color. Refer number three brush and we're going into the black. So I'm just running this along my upper lash line. It's okay to get a little bit messy with it. We're going for more kind of smoky today and I'm even doing a smoky wing just like that. Blend it out a little bit and then apply it right along the lower lash line as well. I'm going to apply a little bit of a black eyeliner. Next, I'm going in with the copper shade in my finger. I am going to apply this all over the lid. Now, this is by far the prettiest shade in this quad. It has some dimension, and it's just really stunning. I love the little tiny sparkles in here. This is a gorgeous color. I'm pretty much putting that everywhere, even on top of the black liner. We'll go back in with that. Then we're going to blend. Kind of wanted that copper everywhere because it's my favorite. I'm taking the brush that I used with the black shadow. I'm gonna kind of just go over it again. And by the way, that shadow applies really great with a brush as well. But we're going into the lightest shade now and I'm going to apply this to the inner corner and underneath the brow. And that's it for this look. And of course, as you can see, this is the final look that we came up with. It's really pretty. I have nothing bad to say about the look. I think it's a very functional palette. It just makes sense. Like I said in the tutorial, I didn't like this shade in my crease and normally I have pretty good luck with using her shimmers in the crease this one just did not look good on me so that might be something you want to consider but it's definitely definitely not my favorite formulation from Charlotte Tilbury this isn't my favorite quad the look is pretty don't get me wrong but it's not an absolute must-have you're spending so much money on her products anyways there are other ones I think you should go for now as far as how this formulation compares to her original quad these are a new formulation. They're a bit more of a gelée. They do have some powder feeling to them, but they're not creamy at all. Your fingers slip over the powder, you know? It's not creamy. It's more dry feeling. Not in a bad way. It just isn't as nice and creamy and pigmented like the original formula. And I'm really disappointed that she came out with these quads and they weren't the same formula as the Fire Rose quad because that formula was so impressive. That's the formula that I would recommend you go for if you're going to spend that kind of money on Charlotte Tilbury quads. So while these are nice, they are. They're a bit pricey. They're not that unique of colors. Not a necessity. If you are strongly eyeing these and you really love the color stories, go for it. The formula is nice. All of that. But from a realistic standpoint, stepping back, if I would want you guys to spend your hard-earned money on these, if you're not in love with them, you don't need to. If I were to pick one of my two favorites, it's tough because even though this has no depth, this is a color story that I tend to grab for a lot with an additional brown, but this one has a little bit more depth. If you have a deeper skin tone, I would not recommend this one, but if you have a very fair skin tone and you really like those nude kind of eyes, this one's really nice, but again, get the palm forward. This one is nice because of the depth and the variety, but uh, I'm not in love with it. Anyways, you guys, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment them down below. If I don't get to them, hopefully one of you guys will also get to them and we can help each other out. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.